Welcome back guys to the PvP build for the new patch. I'm on my Magicka Saucer. Oh boy. Maxorks are insane this patch. They got a huge buff. Let's talk about the first one. It's a passive from the Dandrick Summoning. Expert Summoner. Increase your max magic hand stamina by a flat 10% if you have no pets active. So this is just a free 10% max magic hand stamina bonus. Second change is Hardened Ward, our main shield. They've implemented a burst heal on top of the shield. Now it heals for around 3 to 4k burst heal on top of your shield, so you don't have to use, let's say, healing ward or another shield. Another big change is Vibrant Shard in case. It's now a burst heal, which also applies minor vitality, so will increase your healing and minor vitality and major vitality will also increase shield strength now. Same counts for defy, so minor and major defy for example, they will debuff your shields, not like before. So overall, really huge change, especially hardened ward is insanely OP now, and the 10% max magic and stamina for free, also OP. Let's talk about the build itself. It's not really a big change. I'm using Welling Crown the front bar for the extra crit resistance and weapon and spell damage. And back bar and sustain set, where Trinitality, you know it, for a ton of magic and stamina recovery needed for especially this kind of playstyle, more a roll dodge playstyle. With Deathless Feed as Mythic for the XHP magic and stamina, one trainee for the XHP, and then Shudana's monster set for the major reserve buff like this we don't need to slot Hurricane or Boundless Storm. So pretty basic setup, nothing too special. Instead of Rallying Cry, alternative use Dragon's Grip, which fits in very well with our spammable Crushing Shock, will empower all status effects. And instead of Wretched Vitality, something like Crafty Alphic also works. On the back bar then, since I'm using hard on board on the back bar, would empower our shield. But I personally prefer this setup, it's really strong, damage is way more than enough, and sustain is insane, so up to you, you have multiple choices here. Alternative to Deathier's Feet, Esoteric Environment Griefs also work, I've seen some decent builds with it, or Cetis for the extra 4k armor, max health and health recovery, but then your block mitigation will be zero and you will lose Shudan, which is always annoying when a magical source of space is not there for Boundless Storm or Hurricane, and Hurricane or Boundless Storm is kind of a waste. You would have to destart Elements Susceptibility, the three powerful status effects for Crushing Weapon, for the major breach buff, Always kinda hard to sustain, even with Red Vitality, a stamina spare on a magical sorcerer works, but I personally prefer Shudan with Edisas, especially this patch, since the status effects got empowered. So as you can see, you have many many options on a magical sorcerer. This is just one example how I prefer to play. Armor types, one heavy chest of course, in reinforced for the extra resistance, we don't need any crit resistance on the other pieces, we have Rallying Cry, so I've decided to use 5 well fitted and 1 sturdy. You can also put some infused piece if you want for more max magica to increase our shield size. I prefer well fitted for, like I said before, more roll dodge playstyle. 1 sturdy, not really needed, I don't block as often on a magica saucer, but sometimes, especially against let's say dizzy swing spam or, or undodgeable things, the block cost reduction helps here. 3 prismatic glyphs, only on the big pieces and the other one max magica. You can also put more Max Magica if you want. Full Arcane on the Jury. We need the extra Magica to increase our shield size. Two Weapon and Spell Damage Glyphs with the Magica Recovery Morph and one Recovery Glyph. Front by Lightning Stuff in charge to increase our status effect chance. Really effective with Crushing Shock as Spareable and with Element Susceptibility slotted. Poison Chant for the Poison Status Effect. And Back by Eye Stuff in Defending with the escapist poisons for more CC immunity. Some changes on the skills in general. Inner light slotted on the front bar for major prophecy, the 12% crit rate. With this and critical search, we have the major sorcery and the major prophecy buff, means we can use the tricep potion. Really helpful, especially on this build. We need the extra stamina recovery. Haunting curse still, crushing shock, like I said, as bamble, crystal fragment, and streak as offense full to mid, energy overload, definitely this morph. Gives a ton of magic and stamina back. Back bar Elisas for major breach and the three status effects. Hardened ward. I have it on the back bar, on my defensive bar. You could put it on the front bar for hunting curse, for example. So inner light will empower your shield slightly a bit. I think 500 in this uh, case. But I personally like it on the back bar, my defensive bar. Up to you, your choice. Vigor for minor resource, 3k armor and a good healing over time. Critical search. Also good healing and for the major sorcery buff, dark conversion for sustain and healing. Also grants minor berserk for free, 5% more damage. 
and Tempo got the best choice on the back bar for minor potation and SO shit button. Instead of Overload, there are two other options like Dawnbreaker or Shooting Star and Backbar instead of Temporal Guard if you don't want to spend hours to farm those time rifts again or if you simply don't have access to the Psychic Skill line. Another option would be the Vampire Ultimate, perfect sign, super expensive though, not really recommended. Or another good option is Life Giver, the Resto Ultimate, then you need to swap out Elisas on the front bar and Curse on the back bar, otherwise you will obviously not proc Elisas with the Restoration stuff. Ray Stunner for the extra weapon spare damage, Magicka and Stamina and Flame Resistance. High Elf should give you slightly more damage, but Dunmar gives a nice max stamina bonus and the Flame Resistance. Yes, of course, we are Vampire. Ascension this build gives us the tankness we need, 30% damage reduction on your missing health, especially as a magical source of shields, really powerful. Mundus the Mage, best in slot. Sugar Scouts, the Tricet food. Alternative, you could use a Theum Picklefish Bowl for more max magicka and more HP, but then you will lose stamina. Is possible stunner with the 2k, almost 2k max stamina raise bonus, is high of definitely sugar scouts. At 3.64 into magicka, nothing in health or stamina, twice a potion as potion. Alternative potion, detection potion against gankers, especially now that's really effective. There are a ton of them. CPs, big changes here. I'm using Daddy Aim, Weapons Expert and Rawful Strikes as offensive CPs with overload, 20% more overload damage and light attack damage. Really, really nice. If you're shooting Star or Dawnbreaker, I would de-slot Weapons Expert for Mastered Arms for more direct damage or another defensive CP with Ironclad. I only have to use buff as damage mitigation. More is not really needed. We are super tanky with the new hardened board. It's crazy. I think Magicka Sorcerer also were never that good before. And red CPs, sustained by suffering, pains you huge and bash you pretty basic, but survival instincts is new. As a dama I have a ton of stamina, like I said before, 24-25k stamina-ish. So slippery is not really needed. Survival instinct gives us 25% cost reduction as soon as we have a status effect on ourselves. Combination, first of all, activate overload, then pre-buff with crit surge, dark conversion and vigor, apply Elisas, curse, crushing shock, twice, into streak. If Chris with Redman procs, use it after the first crushing shock, make this you have a nice burst combination. That's it with another PvP build. Thanks for watching, have a nice day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.